Okay, so this is video number one in our series of uh, installing uh, 3.9 kW off-grid photovoltaic system in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. In this part we're going to talk about uh, site selection and some of the obstacles we have to uh, overcome for where we're at. Um, I should first start off by saying that the client has a 230 acres in the Upper Peninsula right around over here and uh, anyway some of the challenges that he has is that I mean he's not doing off-grid because it's trendy he has no power there so it would cost a fortune to bring power in so he's kind of he's off-grid in every sense of the way anyway um, some of the other challenges we have there are that uh, there's limited resources there. Um, it's not like you can just run out to the store and get something that you need or run up to Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that. Everything's quite a ways away from him. Um, it also means that it's tough to uh, do things like, you know, hire a welder and that sort of stuff. So we'll get into that more later. But anyway, um, another problem with being up there is that uh, it being the latitude that he's at and being around the Great Lakes, he has a lot less light than most people have in the rest of the U.S. And that's something that, I mean, uh, there's nothing we can really do about that. That's the way it is, and we have to kind of design the system around that. Um, another problem he has is that he ha gets about, on average, I think he said 200 inches of snowfall a year. So uh, that's going to weigh heavily into where we install the panels, whether it be on the roof or on the ground or on a pole. These are all things that we have to consider when we do this. Um, you know, I just want to take a second to uh, also explain something. He came to me because he uh, he had had a quote from uh, another uh, installer of these systems, and uh, right now solar is a very hot thing right now. Everybody's jumping on the bandwagon. Our federal rebates are going to end in uh, December 31st, 2016. So everybody's trying to do it and it's a good time to get into solar. Well, whenever you have something like that, you know, there's when there's blood in the water, the sharks do come. Um, I, I think that uh, the quote that somebody gave him was just kind of a I'd just say a, a basically a, a cookie cutter approach where they just said, here's a system, throw it in, it'll work. And you know, it probably would work, but it was, uh, it, it, you know, we wouldn't know how well it would work, and we also uh, knew it was going to be very expensive to go that way. And this customer wanted to be, do a lot of this hands on, so that's what we decided to do. So, anyway, in choosing what you, we do, there's a bunch of things um, that we have to figure out. We've, as far as site selection goes. This is a, a, a solar calculator I use from uh, NOAA. One thing that's kind of fun is you can go here and uh, if you zoom in on anywhere, I, I don't know, this is somewhere in Michigan, so if this is your house I apologize for doing this, but it's a satellite image here. Anyway, I just wanted to show you, here you can see this is probably a garage, this is probably a barn or something like that, and this is probably the structure of the house right there. Well, if someone were to put, and obviously down here is south and up here is north, and east and west and that sort of stuff. Well, anyway, if you want to know, if you want to take a look at your property and see how it would be shaded, whether you know, it comes to different things, obstacles in the way, uh, trees, anything like that, this is a really handy tool because what you can do is when you come down here and you roll down a little bit, you can say, well, right now at the local time right now, this is the way the sun would be hitting that right there. So you can start to see that it would be over his, uh, I guess that's a garage. You can also put in the sunset and the sunrise, and this is all set up for this the eighth day of September right now, but you can change that any time you want. So, for an example, if you say, well, okay, it looks like the sun comes up over here, starts to hit the panels, we're all good, and then right about this time we start losing it because of the shading issue right here. This is not the customer's property. Like I say, I just found something here and just went in on it. But anyway, so you might say that from this hour right here to all the way here when the sun sets, you won't get much sun because you'll have this structure here in the way. I think I can zoom in a little bit more too. Yeah, that's probably a better one there. Anyway, if you say, well, okay, that's great. Well, what about, let's say, we're down here in September. What happens if we go to, say, March? Well, in March, the days are shorter, but look at that. 
when the sun comes up, it'll be hitting the panel more, and we still do that. And then we can say, well, what about in June? Well, in June is our longest time, and uh, you can see that the sun is going to come up here, which really wouldn't matter because if we, with our panels facing like that, until the sun gets around on those panels, is not going to help us anyway. But uh, this is just a fun little tool to look for little things in your yard to see if you have uh, shading issues. So that's one of the tools that we use. Another one that uh, I find very helpful is everybody asks, they say, well, what do you use, what angle do you set the panels at? And the generic answer for this is that you set them at your latitude, and that's kind of been uh, what people have done for a long time, and it's worked very well. Um, then there's also people who say latitude plus 10, and then, then there are people that break it out depending on whether you're doing photovoltaic or whether you're doing this for heat, whether it be heating domestic hot water or whatever. Um, the reason why these are different is that you do different things. Most of the photovoltaic systems being installed today are grid tie. So if they're doing net metering for a year, it really doesn't matter whether you get a lot of sun in the summer and a little bit in the winter because you're looking for a whole year's worth of production. So if you get more sun in the summer, sometimes it's better to angle them up for the summer than it would be to have them fixed so that you would uh, um, have it all year long. Well, in this, in, in my client's situation he's not doing net metering and he's not grid tied so he need when he needs the most amount of power when it's the darkest and the coldest he actually gets the least amount of sun so if you look at this graph this right here which showed this is you know uh, output and uh, this would be for a tracker if you had a million dollar tracker that follow you know an XY tracker that followed everything and you would see that is as you came through here this is uh, uh, November and December as you came down through here it would start to lose but then it would start picking up again and you do all that so that's wonderful well anyway if you come over here this would be a fixed one and this would be like ideal for if you had uh, you know a fixed mount whether it be on your roof or on the ground or whatever and uh, you were doing grid tie because this little light blue line right here um, you would get less in the winter, but overall you would net the most out of your system without moving it. Then these red lines right here say that if you move the panels twice a year, you would increase a little bit. But it's a very little bit for a lot of engineering and a lot of work to do, so I don't really recommend that. In the case of my client, he wants to get the most amount of sun in the winter. So this is the winter curve right here, and as you can see, it doesn't, when you tilt the, ang the, tilt the angles you know, approaching vertical, you get less power in the summer, you get the highest in the shoulder seasons, and you get more power in the winter than if you had them flat down here like this. So that's what we're going to end up doing. So uh, they give you these different calculators, tell you what to do, and all that sort of stuff. So the, the angle that we came up with using his, using calculators and the, um, the number that he, um, you know his latitude we've come up with uh, the 58 and a half degrees which is an extremely steep angle is best for him um, we also when we were talking about snow the snow load I, I, I mean 200 inches of snow is something that I'm not familiar with I live in Rhode Island and we don't get that kind of snow but anyway I, I, I know that it's not going to be 200 inches all at once and that, uh, you know, hopefully some of it will melt off and that sort of stuff. But if we put these on a roof, because they're black panels, if they start to heat up, if they ever get any sun on them, the snow will start to melt off of them, and that's good. But the problem with this system, unlike a micro-inverter system, is that if you have, in his case, 15 panels and the bottom row has snow on it, all the entire array will default to the lowest common denominator. So th that's going to be a real problem. If we have him up on the roof, he's going to have to remove that snow, not to mention all that snow, instead of being distributed uh, across the whole roof, could slide off the panels and end up in one spot in his roof, and that would be a really awful thing as far as structurally and that sort of stuff. So for this customer, or client I should say, we, uh, we, we opted that the ground mount was definitely going to be the way to go. So in doing that and angling them at 58.5 degrees at a hundred, and with an azimuth of
angling them there, um, this, this we just you put in your numbers here. And his particular one, um, the array puts out 3.9 kilowatts. That's how much power is there. But then you have to put in what they call the derating factor, and this this has to do with there's two different ways they rate solar panels. Uh, STC, which is the standard test control, and uh, then there's the another one that's more like real world scenarios. And uh, for example, the panels we're using, I think the STC rating on them are 260 watts a piece, but I think the real rating on them is more closer to 200 watts a piece. So you put this in, and uh, this also you have to factor in the when you lose energy going from DC through the inefficiency of the charge controller and then storing them in the battery and then you always have a mechanical loss when you bring it back up and then put it through your inverter and all that sort of stuff. But anyway, just bear with me. So we do this. Now forget about this row right here because that, that's applying if you had a grid tie system. This isn't where he lives but it's the closest station to where I could um, get data for him. And uh, it has his latitude, and lo longitude, and his elevation, all that sort of stuff. Well, anyway, it puts all this stuff in, and it gives you what you should say. And I should also back up and tell you that this isn't anybody's trying to sell us anything. This is the U.S. Department of Energy's website that uh, they put this stuff out. And this is over data they've gathered in the last 30 years. And uh, basically it says in January, this is the amount of, you should get about 295 kilowatt hours Per, day, uh, per month out of the panel. Like I say, we don't care about the dollars because that's if we were selling back to the utility, which we're not doing. Um, in this particular instance, when we start talking about loads, um, the reason why this is important is that he, the customer, he's shooting to go from eight, seven, to only use uh, seven to eight kilowatt hours per day of electricity. So once you add the inefficiency of the batteries in there and the inverter and all that sort of stuff, he's going to have to produce about uh, 300 kilowatts a month before, if he can do that consistently, he won't have to run a generator backup. Well, here we are in September, and you can see he's just going to barely make it through if we had the system installed today, which we don't. The sad part about this install is that as soon as we get this up, it's going to roll into October. And as you can see, he's already going to be deficient by about 12 kilowatts. Now what happens is um, we'll have a system where when the batteries get down to a certain level, the generator will start up and charge it up. So that won't be that bad. Um, it looks like November is going to be the worst month for him. And you might say, well, why is that? And there's a couple reasons why. The, the, best, and the best way to say that is that, that what's really cool about this site is it doesn't work just on your latitude. It takes into consideration um, precipitation and cloud cover for your geographic area. So even though December 22nd or December 21st is the shortest day of the year, he's actually, on average in that area, they're going to capture more usable sunlight in December down here than they would in November. So November is the worst month right here and he's going to be shy for about what 89 kilowatts and uh, I'll show you the math on that later but what that works out to be is it looks like he's going to probably have to run his generator an average of about an hour a day but that's the bad news. Then up here it'll be less than that and then when he gets to January he hopefully won't be having to run it hardly at all, if at all, and then from there on in, all these months he should have a surplus of electricity. Um, the thing I caution you to watch out for is that when I say you have a surplus of electricity, that's assuming that our bank is big enough and that he has enough storage to cover for days that it rains, because obviously this isn't a linear thing. Some days are going to be, he's going to capture a lot of power, and other days he's not going to capture very much at all. So that's how that works, and uh, just thought that's a kind of a uh, really kind of fun uh, way to figure out what you can expect. Um, if you have any questions, um, I suppose if I get my act together, right now I'm doing all this on my phone, so bear with me. I, I'll try to put the links to all these different calculators down in the comments below. If I haven't done that when you see this, mess, you know, put a comment below and it'll show up and I'll send you a link because uh, like I say, I'm trying to do this now. But anyway, that's all the stuff for the site selection. And uh, oh, you know what? There's one other one too. I forgot. Let me go over here. Um, 
No, I, no, I guess that's it. We talked about angles. All right, good deal. So that's it. Uh, hope you stick around. I think the next thing that we'll probably talk about are going to be uh, loads, how to determine loads, and that will help us determine, uh, that will show you where we came up with how big a system he needs, how much photovoltaic input he needs, how many batteries for storage he needs, and how much uh, inverter power he needs to pull the power from the batteries out and send it into his house. So uh, loads will be the, uh, the next section, so stick around, and uh, please subscribe. Thank you.